We've taken the philosophy as a company that uh, if you're going to put the effort in this business, it's hard work, it's a lot of effort, it takes a lot of time, you might as well focus on the best of the best. So our assets are located in the tier one jurisdictions that the senior miners want, and we're focused on high grade assets that they want, and now we want to turn them to, uh, to, uh, to ultimately to mines that are long life mines. Um, we have been able to generate some of the industry's, industry's best drill intersections. We've, we've had the good fortune of being able to do that. We're well financed. We've got about 14 and a half million cash as of today in the bank where we're halfway through our drill program. We've got a great shareholder base and roster. I've got the slide at the end here to talk you through that. Um, and a management team that's uh, done it before and, and hopes to do it again in a, a business plan that we've been very effective on executing thus far. Um, you know, I assume all of you are here today to, to learn about investment opportunities, so I thought I took the time and say, why us and, and why now? Um, obviously, this is my favorite uh, gold junior to invest in. Um, but really, I think it starts with the assets, and, and there's ounces, and then there's high quality ounces. And, and what we've got at our Johnson Track project, and I, I hope you'll agree at the end of this, is an asset that is a really high quality asset and high quality ounces. Um, and we're fully funded for that step change value creation. And when I mean step change, I mean seeing your share price go from here to there. Uh, and that happens with the drill bit, and it happens on projects that have the kind of grade that we have. Um, drilling is underway right now. We've got two rigs on site. Uh, we're about halfway through our, our, our planned 10,000 plus meter program. It's focused on both exploration and resource expansion. The exploration, to talk to, to, to what Eric touched on there. Last season, at the very end of the year, we, we, we tapped into something that was incredibly high grade, something called Bonanza grade, but we didn't get the assays back till the end of the season. So this year, that's where we started. We started with both rigs on that particular um, uh, target, and we'll have those res first results from that coming soon. Um, and as a company, you also get some exposure to other assets. We've got a broad portfolio. We've got a heck of a land position in the Timmins camp, uh, which I'll only touch on briefly. But you just put, you know, grade into perspective in our drill intersections. Here's a list of some of our better holes over the last two, three years. Last year, we made number three on the OPAX list. They're an Australian group that compiles, you know, drill intersections by the mining industry. Keeping some pretty heady company there. Most of us, the, the companies around us are billion dollar plus companies. Um, the biggest takeaway from this, though, that six and a half meters of plus 500 grams per tonne gold with 2,000 grams per tonne silver and actually had significant base metal credits, was that was from four kilometers away from our main deposit. And our main deposit, we're drilling 50, 70, 100 meter plus intersections of 10 to 20 grams gold, again with tremendous base metal credit. So it's really neat and very compelling when you start to see that kind of mineralization similarities elsewhere on the property. It gives you some uh, confidence you're going to find more. So just where we are, uh, Johnson Tract is far and away our flagship. It's our main assets where most of our dollars go. Uh, as Eric alluded, we have over a million ounces gold equivalent right now at a very high grade of uh, 9.5 grams per tonne or 9.4 grams per tonne gold equivalent. It is polymetallic, so it comes with copper and zinc, but about 50, 60 percent of the value is driven by the gold. Um, it's not remote. It's got good access. Um, there's a lot to like about where it's situated. Big portfolio in the Timmins camp, and something that's new to this slide that we've not really talked about before, but we've always had, it sort of sat in the back of the closet, so to speak, was our uh, Yukon Gold portfolio. We actually have a very significant land position that we've never really talked about, but we're talking about now, uh, because our neighbor, in fact, we've optioned some of the properties we have to our neighbor is uh, Snowline Gold. We've had phenomenal success this past year up in the Yukon, and so you'll start to hear more about that as well in the coming future. Um, so just where we are, uh, we're off the shore of Cook Inlet. There's a lot of oil and gas production in this area, uh, communities to support what we're doing. We're leasing the land from a, from a native corporation. So Alaska set up its land claims in the, uh, about 50 years ago actually, and they created these for-profit corporate entities that own the land and we're leasing it from them, which makes it, they're a heck of a landlord, great group to work with. Um, and certainly, and it also comes with road and port easement rights here. So our business plan at Johnson Tract is really quite simple. You know, we think we have the makings of the ideal deposit. We're focused now on making it bigger, both by uh, expanding the deposit itself and finding other deposits, but also building value through the de-risk stage by uh, looking at metallurgy, looking at permitting, things like that, uh, to ultimately have this thing ready and uh, tied up with a bow. Um, and by ideal mineral deposit, what I mean is this rare combination of grade and thickness. If there's one thing that really makes us stand out, it's not just the grade. We happen to have one of the higher grade undeveloped gold deposits in North America. 
but we have far and away the thickest high-grade gold deposit. Um, it would be a small footprint underground, fairly straightforward to permit uh, project in our view, and it also comes with strategic uh, energy metals uh, along with it. So as far as the resource goes, you know, we, we acquired it. There was about a half million ounces there. Uh, we came out with our first resource. We hit 750,000 ounces gold equivalent. Just earlier this summer, we came out with our second resource, uh, an update, and we're up over a million ounces now uh, in the indicated category, so that's the, highest co the higher confidence category. We have additional ounces in the inferred. Um, but again, I just want to highlight that pure leading thickness. We're about 10 times the average thickness of a, of a typical high-grade uh, project, and, and that really translates to economics when it comes time to mine. Um, wide open to expansion. So looking at the mineability side of things, this is conceptual. We don't have a mine plan. We don't have a PEA yet, but you can sort of visualize how you would develop this project. The terrain really lends itself to being able to access it with lateral development from underground, which is fairly low cost, upfront capital get into it. You'd be able to do bulk mine style underground mining, uh, mining from the bottom up and use gravity as your friend. Um, there's an awful lot to like from that, from that aspect. Um, and then just 15 miles to the coast, uh, which is key. So in terms of near-term value creation, I've talked now about sort of the backstop value and what we already have. Now it's about how are we going to create more value for our shareholders. Um, we really do think we're in a multi-deposit environment. We're on to what we think is our second deposit. We think there's more to be found as well. So our first order of business was to show that this new DC discovery wasn't just a one-hole wonder, that there was, you know, there's nothing else there. We, we think it has legs and we're focused on, on growing that. Um, there's a bunch of other prospects uh, that we, some that we'll drill this year, some we just won't be able to get to because of time. Um, but we're also working on the engineering and economic side. We've, we've kind of matured the property to a stage where it's time to start looking at some of those elements. And, and we've had some new metallurgical data in hand. Uh, which is key. It's got fantastic recoveries and really high quality clean concentrates that will be very, very desirable. Um, and that puts us in a position to start some of the, uh, the studies you need to do to look at what it would be like to, to develop a mine here. Touching on the DC prospect, uh, this was the prospect I was highlighting that's four kilometers away from our main deposit. Uh, we've completed over 25 holes there now. We, we like what we've been seeing visually and we should have assays very, very soon from that. One of the reasons we like it so much is the style of mineralization and the style of alteration is very, very similar to the main deposit four kilometers away. Uh, and that gives us an advantage in terms of how we go about exploring it. We know that there's a certain stratigraphic time horizon or geologic host unit that's preferable. We also see that it looks like it's connected to a fairly long trend and part of a bigger system that we're, we're also testing, uh, some of which is see no drilling at all. So there's, there's lots and lots to chase up at this particular prospect. One of the things that really hurt us and hurt the whole industry last year, uh, last couple of years really has been assay turnaround time. Uh, so one of the things we did to try to take matters into our own hands was actually create an on-site prep facility where we, you know, everyone's used to logging and cutting the core like you see in the two left-hand pictures. But most people send samples off to the lab to do the crushing and pulverizing before they assay it. That's where the bottleneck is. That was taken eight to 10 weeks before they even put it into the assaying. So we've done this ourselves, and we got a little bit later start to commission it and things, but uh, we, we should have, we're, we're starting to see the fruits of our, our labor with this, and we like taking control of it. And what it really allows us to do is get assays back to follow up on results. And we, we're only halfway through our program here, so this is going to guide the latter half of our drill program now. And also, as an investor, gives you news flow sooner. Everyone wants assays faster, and so we're, we're just about there, so stay tuned. Um, so just, you know, before moving on from Johnson, the key takeaways here, you know, that grade plus thickness, that really is what makes this deposit special. You know, it's 10 times thicker than the average grade of a, of a average width, I should say, than a typical high grade deposit. Very mineable. Uh, all the attributes we see really is incredibly favorable from a mine engineering standpoint. We see a ton of scale and exploration upside, and we think we have the ESG aspects covered. There's a lot to like about knowing the you know, you're going to get direct economic benefits to the, to the Native Corp uh, shareholders who are the indigenous people that live in the surrounding region. And that generally buys you a lot more political support when it comes time to permit your project. 
So, you know, before closing here, just to touch on Timmins, you know, in 10 minutes you can't talk about all your projects, but we do have one of the biggest land positions held by a junior in the Timmins mining camp. Timmins happens to be the number one gold jurisdiction in Canada. There's been more gold come out of here than anywhere else in Canada. And we're getting zero value for this now. As a shareholder, you get a lot of basically free optionality here. Uh, our philosophy has been going to areas that were underexplored within a camp like this. It's exactly what a company like Great Bear did in the Red Lake camp, uh, where our team also happens to have a lot of history. Um, so each of these prospects, for various different reasons, is largely underexplored, but has fantastic geology, and it's, uh, it's an important part of our story, and, uh, and stay tuned as we, uh, we continue to advance, I, I guess, the, uh, the opportunities there. Um, we actually drilled a discovery there this spring, but it was a terrible time to announce it. Plus, it was low grade, which uh, didn't really fit with our, our branding, but it was, you know, 130 odd meters of better than a half gram gold that hasn't been followed up on. Uh, so, you know, just lastly here, our cap structure, we've got a great roster of shareholders, blue chip, US and Canadian and European institutions. A lot of names here you'll probably know. We have a senior gold producer who invested in us when we went public three years ago. They've continued to contribute along the way. Uh, it's a nice endorsement of the team. We've got a reasonably tight share structure, not a lot of uh, overhang from warrants and options. A uh, bunch of cash in the bank and uh, I think well-priced uh, and this, uh, this environment. Lots of newsletter support, our favorite, of course, sitting right to my left here, and uh, some good analyst coverage as well. Um, just hammer home the same themes. Uh, I think it's a great time to, to own us. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of news coming in the near future. I, I think an investment in us is backstop, a great, uh, a great resource that we already have, and, and you kind of get this free option on Ontario and the Yukon, which uh, we're not afraid to be creative about. So thanks very much. I got a booth out back for, for later.